What's up everybody? My name is Tam and welcome to my YouTube channel. Have you ever known anybody who's willing to fight, who can be pretty aggressive and they can function in everyday society pretty good, but they're going to stand up for themselves. This person might have complex PTSD. D, which is linked to PTSD and BPD, Borderline Personality Disorder. And this year I've been on this quest to try to figure out what the heck CPTSD is. And I think a lot of people who have this disorder, they know who they are. But when I'm reading things, watching videos, I am so confused. It's like trying to walk through a sticky spider web and get the spider webs off of you. I know that might sound silly and Maybe you feel the same way. It's so confusing. I'm like, why aren't we just calling them borderlines? Or why aren't we calling them PTSD? So me saying that CPTSD are fighters, that's another one of my attempts to figure this thing out. So if you disagree with me, let me know in the comments because I'm learning. And also check out my CPTSD video and like and subscribe my videos, please. I love you for it bite 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 that's your cptsd i think there's a lot of confusion between borderlines and cptsd so do you see borderlines as fighters do borderlines fight people all the time i think that's where i'm going to differentiate the two of them because yes borderlines go into rages they can scream and yell and have tantrums and be totally out of control. And you might see a teenager in school acting out all the time, but generally in adult world, mm, if there are really low functioning borderlines, you might see them being super all over the place and difficult to get along with where they're just not functioning very well. I think, CPTSD is almost like a higher functioning level of BPD. They have some of the traits, but they're not as needy in my opinion. Not to say that they can't be with someone that they are extremely connected to, like a family member, but they are going to stand up for themselves in a way that a regular borderline personality disorder will not. So let's put a borderline and a CPTSD with a narcissist. I'm talking about pure, not the mixture of both, but pure types. Who's going to win against that narcissist? It's going to be the CPTSD every time. In fact, a lot of times that narcissist, they're going to lose that fight because CPTSD is geared up. They've been fighting their whole life. It's part of their survival skills. It's a defense mechanism. They're going to stand up for themselves and they will be able to debate that narcissist. They know exactly what buttons to push on a narcissist. They're not going to mind fighting them as much as the regular everyday person who doesn't have CPTSD. They're going to stand up for themselves. They're not going to shirk away from a narcissist trying to come at them. They're also gonna defend other people against that narcissist. They're not afraid to stand up because they grew up with some level of trauma where they had to fend for themselves in some sort of way. They're also always kind of looking for the punch or blocking the punch. Are you guys into the Enneagram? I am, I've studied the Enneagram a lot. So you could also compare CPTSD to the Asserter Enneagram. Asserters, you think of your police officers, you think of people who they speak the truth, they don't sugarcoat, they say it like it is, they're not going to cower, they're gonna be bold in the face of confrontation. Those are your Enneagram nine. So I would not be surprised if maybe an unhealthier version of Enneagram, the Asserter Enneagram was CPTSD because they will stand up for themselves. They can be fighters. And look at how complex post-traumatic stress disorder is defined. It's defined as a condition where you experience some symptoms of PTSD, 
along with some additional symptoms, I would say BPD, such as difficulty controlling your emotions, feeling very angry or distrustful towards the world. So if you don't trust the world, you're gonna be combative. The major clues that if a person is CPTSD versus a borderline is that they are willing to fight. And I'm talking about verbal fighting. I'm talking about standing up strongly for what you believe in, for what you think. I think borderlines, it, it, it's a little murkier water sometimes on what they believe, what they think, who they are, how they believe things should go. Okay, my new friend is into the color blue, so so am I. Everything is blue now. I don't think CPTSD by itself is gonna shift like that. They're gonna be stronger in what they believe, what they want, who they are. It can be a little murky too in some areas, but they're gonna be stronger in that area. I think if you put an, a borderline with a narcissist, that narcissist is going to win. And it's not to say win, quote unquote, because it's not to say that that borderline won't stand up to the narcissist, but they might be a shaky mess. They might be just trying to, hey, I don't want you to leave me, so whatever you say, whatever you command, what, however you abuse me, what do you want? You want to extort money from me? Here you go. And I'm not saying that all borderlines would do that, but some of them will because they're just trying to be loved, they want to bond, they want to be cared about, they don't want that narcissist to leave them. But you put uh, CPTSD with a narcissist in a marriage and woo, you're gonna be fighting, man. That's gonna be a combative relationship. So just my opinion, when I think CPTSD, I think of the fighter. I recently heard a famous guy who was an actor. He was talking about his upbringing. It was so abusive that I, it took me several times to watch because he was in foster care and got adopted by somebody who was extremely abusive. I mean, this person would punish him by making him stand out in the cold, naked, take a shower, go back outside in the freezing cold, hitting him with hammers or just horrible, right? And so he learned to run away from home, sleep outside sometimes. I mean, it was just pure survival. I'm stealing food from the school so I can make it for a couple of days. Just horrific, right? But he seems to have somewhat of a, a pretty stable sense of self. But he said, high school, you have people in authority that are coming at you or trying to correct your behavior. If they came at him wrong, he might swing on them. Like, what's up? Why? I mean, wouldn't you be? See, this is where there are a lot of deficits. A lot of people in the school system don't even know what CPTSD is. But it's important to know that because if you have a kid that's combative, that's swinging at you, that's confrontational, that kid may have been abused and they may also be developing CPTSD. And so you need to reframe things and look at things from a different angle and a different lens so that you're not just like, oh my gosh, this kid is so bad. This kid has been abused. So you might want to switch strategies on how you're handling them because they're going to have their dukes up. So let me know what your opinion is. Do you think CPTSD's one clue is that they are typically fighters. They're going to defend themselves. They're not going to cower from an argument at all. And by the way, people with CPTSD, pure CPTSD are not narcissists. They're not. Someone might try to see them as a narcissist, like, oh, they're mean. I'm calling them fighters. So they must be really mean in the same way that narcissists are and that's just not the case i think cptsds can be very caring they can have a consciousness for other people's feelings they can give them the shirt off of their back they can be extremely truly and genuinely helpful to people in a way that is not narcissistic at all so please do not confuse the two if you want to learn more about narcissists check out my book 
the workplace and narcissists. It's going to teach you a lot of things about narcissists that you, pro you probably don't know because it's from my perspective. Make sure that you like my videos, hit the subscribe button, share my videos with other people. It really helps to make the information that I'm trying to share so that I can help other people. It makes it worth it. Thank you guys so much for listening. I appreciate you and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.